After the mixed reception of Full Moon, myself and many others were skeptical about how its follow-up episode Apology Tour would play out. Many fans were invested in seeing what's next for the Stolitz ship, and for people who weren't invested in Stolitz, this would be the first episode in over a year where we would get to see the return of Verosica, a fan favorite in the Hell of Boss community, myself included. And what we got is probably one of the most unique and jarring episodes to date, as Apology Tour breaks away from the comedy angle this show is supposed to be, and goes all in on the drama, resulting in a surprisingly depressing episode. I'm going to go over a summary of the events that happened within this episode, so if you want to get right to the review, skip to the time displayed on screen. The episode begins with Blitz hopping the fence into the backyard of Stolz' mansion to confront Stolz on the events of the previous episode. Stolz wants nothing more than for Blitz to leave him alone, but Blitz is persistent on trying to seduce Stolz and makes things go back to the way they were. While the two are arguing, Stolz mentions that he has been invited to an anti-Blitzo party being held by Verosica that he's going to attend, and this only infuriates Blitz more and tries to prove a point to Stolz that he has the ability to apologize to people and leaves to apologize to everyone he's wronged except for Stolz. After a montage of Blitz apologizing to previous antagonists of past episodes, his list of people to apologize to leads him to going to the anti-Blitzo party, where he witnesses Stolz accompanied by Verosica singing on stage about his heartbreak. After Blitz sees how badly he hurt Stolz, he pulls him aside to try to explain himself, but Stolz is so drunk that he can't comprehend anything Blitz is saying. Before Blitz gets the opportunity to truly apologize to Stolz, another partygoer invites Stolz to dance, and Blitz is left with no other option other than to talk to Verosica. The two talk about their past with each other, with Blitz pointing out that he's not a bad person for being bad at relationships, while Verosica expresses how bad he hurt her and everyone at the party. The two eventually calm down and have a somber heart-to-heart -heart moment, accompanied by Blitz watching Stolz begin to make out with the person who invited him to dance. At first, this angers Blitz, but Verosica points out that if Blitz really does want to become a better person, it starts with Blitz being happy for Stolz. Blitz leaves the party, feeling guilty about all the people he hurt, and the episode ends with him sitting in his van alone, wallowing in self-pity and regret. Surprisingly, despite Full Moon being dubbed the Stolitz episode, I feel like Apology Tour delves much deeper into their relationship more than anything else in this episode, which is why there isn't that much to say about Apology Tour that isn't in relation to the characters. And who better to start with than the apparent root of all evil in this show, Blitz. This entire episode tries really hard to shine Blitz in a bad light, be it starting the episode right away by not respecting Stolz' need for space, going on an apology tour just to spite Stolz, and then going to a party where we get to see how many people he's hurt, and how apparently in every single past relationship he's always been the heartbreaker. But in reality, despite being portrayed as some sort of evil that has affected so many people's lives, the only person who has a justifiable reason for hating Blitz in this episode is Stolz. But for everyone else, all these exes who are attending Verosica's anti-Blitz party, their bitterness is far less justifiable as any emotionally stable person wouldn't spend their free time going to a party dedicated to demonizing their ex, but also, without the necessary context, it's difficult to sell Blitz as being as bad of a person as this episode wants him to be. If we had a deeper dive into why some of the average partygoers hate Blitz so much, the pity this episode is trying to instill into the viewer for these random people would be much more effective. After all, these people are from hell. For all we know, half the exes could have been obsessive and abusive, and the best thing Blitz could have done in that situation is to leave them and break their hearts. Even when it comes to Verosica, who had her heart broken because he ditched her, is essentially demonizing Blitz for having boundaries, and then tries to paint him as a bad person because of that, which is pretty ironic coming from someone who basically instigated someone getting raped in the episode she was introduced in. So despite Apology Tour trying so hard to paint Blitz as a bad guy, at the end of the day, Blitz made a point about how all he's really done that he's being condemned for is sucking at relationships, which in hell really doesn't seem like something someone should be hated for so much when so much worse is done by so many others who are genuinely evil. But outside of Blitz being hated by everybody, we also get to see his apologetic and vulnerable side in some scenes, which was nice, but we don't really learn anything, we as viewers didn't already know, so they didn't really stick out to me or seem all that memorable. As for Stolas, we get a deeper look into how Stolas is handling being rejected by Blitz and learning to move on from him, which I think is the best course of action for Stolas. 
He may not be confronting his issues or fixing his life, as his sole focus is trying to ease the pain in a way that doesn't revolve around getting Blitz's attention, and I enjoy seeing that as it's a side of Stolas we have never seen before. Even just seeing Stolas be angry with Blitz was a refreshing change of pace, and we get to see every facet of his character be it anger, sorrow, and by the end, a form of happiness. For Stolas fans, this is probably one of the best character explorations of this character we have gotten in Hell of a Boss. Lastly, we have Rosica, one of my favorite characters, and a character that the show can do so much with, and as far as her actions go, I love how she was handled. But as for her personality, I am very concerned. Verasica isn't necessarily an antagonist, so I never thought of her as a threat and more of just a nuisance in Blitz's life, and her arranging an anti-Blitzo party is perfectly petty enough to fit her character. That followed by her being this sort of leader for all of Blitz's exes and using this party as a therapeutic method for herself and everyone else Blitz hurt is an interesting idea that realistically deepened her character. Her actions within this episode are better than I could have expected, and I would have loved to see her relationship with the exes explored more. Unfortunately, the Verosica we see in this episode isn't the Verosica we saw in Season 1. The Verosica we see here seems to swap from being disturbingly psychotic to being a sympathetic victim who is in touch with her emotions and is giving people life advice. This is not who Verosica is. Verosica is supposed to be a reflection of Blitzo. She's just as petty, selfish, and inconsiderate as he is, with the only difference between the two being that she's rich and has a high social status, while Blitz is poor and lonely. She really is just a gender-bent version of Blitz in opposite circumstances to him. She has been shown to be mildly sadistic at times, but to see her go full yandere, repeatedly stabbing a cake of Blitzo, or just cackling on stage for absolutely no reason other than to emphasize how damaged and twisted her mind is, is a character trait that has never been insinuated or mentioned before. The best argument you can really make to explain this change in her character is that these are the only two moments in the entire show where she isn't directly interacting with Blitz, so maybe this is just how she normally is when Blitz isn't around to sour her mood, but even if that is the case it still comes off as very jarring, and probably should have been acknowledged by somebody to help clear up any confusion on the viewer's end. As for her soft and sad side we see near the end of the episode, this is a lot more believable, and the idea that Verosica may be the only person in Hell that understands Blitz on a deeper level is very interesting, and I wouldn't mind her becoming an essential piece in trying to fix Blitz's life. But like I mentioned earlier, her grudge against Blitz is just kind of unbelievable. Blitz ditched her, and despite all her fame and success, she still hasn't been able to move on, and she hates him solely because he set a boundary and she crossed it. Obviously Blitz is not completely in the right in this situation, as just ghosting someone is a cowardly and cruel thing to do, as it keeps the other party from getting closure, which only prolongs their pain. But if Verosica is as wise as she lets on in this scene, she would know that Blitz did what he did out of a sense of fear, and she shouldn't hate him for that. Also, I want to point out how forced it is for Verosica to be a character who is in touch with her feelings. Verosica has been established as a total alcoholic, which is supposed to numb her feelings. The idea that an alcoholic, who is mean to just about everybody who doesn't hate Blitz, is secretly this wise, nuanced, and tragic character who not only understands her feelings but everyone else's is just such amateurish writing. A character like Verosica going from the person we see in Spring Broken to the character we see in Apology Tour requires an arc or for her to experience or learn something that changes her as a person, but because we don't see either of those things, she just seems like a totally different character in this episode. And if this is all set up for Verosica getting her redemption arc based on how she was handled in this episode, it's looking to be just as rushed and unearned as Fizzerali's was. Every single character in this episode could have warranted a standalone video to discuss and analyze how they were portrayed, and that's what makes the characterization of Blitz, Stolz, and Verosica so good in this episode. 
I may not agree with how they were all handled, but the fact that each character has so many layers and rich chemistry with each other forces you to think for yourself about who is in the right or wrong in this episode, and if you know me, I will always take a cast of characters who make you spend your free time thinking about them, rather than a cast of characters who entertain you during the runtime and then you forget about once the episode ends. So despite the way these characters were handled being clumsy and inconsistent at times, I praise Apology Tour for perhaps presenting one of the richest and most intriguing portrayals of character dynamics and messy nuances behind them I have seen in all of indie animation, and that alone makes this episode worth your time. That being said, I gotta ask, where's Barbie Wire? One would think that an episode centered around characters that hate Blitz, Barbie Wire would at least make a brief appearance. Veroska being able to befriend Barbie would literally be the ultimate revenge against Blitz, so it makes perfect sense for Veroska to especially want her to be present at an anti-Blitz party to send a message. I guess given that Blitz is already juggling Stolz and Veroska in this episode, adding Barbie into the party would have cramped the episode and of the three she certainly is the least necessary, but just having Barbie be on the stage next to Veroska and Stolz to make a speech and announce that she has to leave the party early would have created such a great moment where we get to see Blitz have to choose between chasing after Barbie or Stolz, and him choosing Stolz over his own sister would have truly showed how much he cares for Stolz. So yeah, it's a shame that Barbie Wire didn't show up in this episode as I think she would have improved the episode, but not by so much that I think Apology Tour would be a significantly better episode if she was in it. And besides the character drama, there isn't much to this episode. I enjoyed the actual Apology Tour montage where we get to see a bunch of references to old villains of Season 1, which made the Hell of a Boss universe feel interconnected, which is something I always enjoy in a show. Just seeing Martha and Miss Mayberry make a cameo alone was plenty of fan service, but seeing Lululand again with a slight confirmation that Robofizz is still alive, and Dennis from Queen Bee arriving at the anti blitzo party felt so rewarding for fans who have stuck with this show throughout all these years. As for the music, I'm not particularly fond of All To You. It's just not really my style of music, and Stolas sounds much more like Bryce Pinkham singing instead of Stolas, but I'll admit it can be kinda catchy and Hell of a Boss has always been good at making catchy music, so I can't really say this song is bad, as I think it is still on par with the quality of music the show typically presents, but it's not one I will be coming back to listen to in my free time or remember fondly. Thankfully, there is another song in this episode which is amazing. Hell of a Boss has a habit of introducing end credit songs that are often overshadowed by the primary song of the episode, but I think Apology Tour is the first episode where it's the inverse, where Verosica's I'm Over You that plays near the end of the episode and through the credits stole the spotlight. It reminds me so much of Vacay to Bone Town, which has remained in my top three Vizzy Pop songs ever since the day Spring Broken was released, and that makes sense since it's a Veroska song which carries on that upbeat pop tune accompanied by a chill synth wave type of aesthetic that creates a unique blend of high energy from the pop element that is balanced out and positively juxtaposed by the chill energy of the synth wave elements, culminating into a unique song that is as relaxing as it is addicting. Now usually by this point in the review I would have brought up the problems with this show's comedy, but this is such a dour and serious episode that it doesn't even feel like a comedy. There weren't really any jokes that annoyed me, and the only joke that made me laugh even on repeat viewings is the scene where Blitz essentially admits his entire inferiority complex just for it to be dismissed and turned into a joke. I can completely understand if this joke annoyed some people, but I found the simple and anticlimactic payoff punchline of Blitz just ignoring what he just said and being completely childish for no reason oddly hilarious. But beyond that, there really isn't anything of note humor-wise in Apology Tour, because this might be Hell of a Boss's first episode that you would struggle to classify as a comedy, and for the most part, I think it worked. It's a better alternative than the comedy we've gotten this season anyway. Apology Tour is a dramatic change of pace for Hell of a Boss. If you don't care about the Stolitz ship, it's going to be really hard to enjoy this episode since the entire episode is just drama between the two. Thankfully, Veroska's addition did add some much needed variety, but at the end of the day, it's just more relationship drama. But taking into account that this entire episode is just character drama and references to past episodes, I still think it did a pretty good job in portraying what this episode wanted to be. 
The lack of humor felt like a much needed oasis in a desert full of sex toys and innuendos. The pacing was good enough. There are two songs that appeal to two very different audiences. Verasica's characterization was the only thing that annoyed me, which for there to be only one thing that annoys me in a hell of a boss episode feels like an indie animated miracle. And I can't help but admire Apology Tour by making people debate and think amongst themselves about who was in the right or wrong when it comes to Blitz and Stolas. Apology Tour isn't exceptional by any means, and I would have liked to see a gap between this episode and Full Moon to let the Stolas drama breathe for a while longer, but it isn't a bad episode. Can't say I especially enjoyed it or disliked it, but again, it made people think. And that alone makes this episode more special and important than most of Hell of Boss's second season. Why would I allow everyone to see how much I like you? You sold your life for a thrust! I don't look down on you! How many times do I. When have I ever. You are so cute when you are serious. And it isn't supposed to be lent out to itty bitty imps like yourself. Oh. Who dare threaten my impish little plaything? Who said that? How the fuck did you get caught by humans? Are you little creatures not being careful up here? You know, if you get in trouble, I get in trouble. We don't want that. Ugh.